This is rigid insulation. So you can see like that. You can get this stuff at Home Depot or lots of other places too. And, and there are lots of different ways of cutting it. The first way is with a box cutter. So I extend the box cutter blade like that. And then I take, and I go like this. And I just shave it off. It cuts really easily. It's a little dangerous, but make sure you have leather gloves on. It cuts beautifully. A serrated knife also works, but I find a box cutter works great. It's very sharp. It's also possible to take a rotary hand tool and a sanding band like this and to easily carve the rigid insulation. It, it's very easy to carve it. You've got sort of a rough shape, and if you do a little bit more detail, then you can smooth it out. It's also possible to take a magic marker and mark it. It's also really easy to cut rigid insulation with a knife edge jigsaw blade. That's a knife edge jigsaw blade which has been sharpened. This is a knife edge jigsaw blade. It's very sharp and it's been sharpened with a sharpening stone to make it even sharper. You can see I used the knife edge jigsaw blade to cut where I marked with a sharpie. Uh, I can make a wavy line or a straight line, really whatever I want. Very easy to do. This is just regular sandpaper. It's maybe 220. And you can tear off a little piece like this and you can sand, sand it a little bit like that and it'll smooth everything out. This is the final step in working with this material. See, it's a lot smoother now. See, it smooths it. It's really easy to do. You can smooth anything out by hand with the sandpaper. This is aluminum foil duct tape. It's available from Home Depot and other places. See, it's aluminum foil with a backing on it. I tear some off like this, 
then I remove the backing like this and then I put it on the on the edge of the board where, wherever I want and this makes it tougher like that and you can paint over it and it makes it much more wear resistant then you can take some spray paint like this and you can spray it a real light coat over top of the um, rigid insulation and on the aluminum duct tape like that just a very thin layer because it'll sort of eat away into the rigid insulation but once you have one layer on it won't eat in anymore and it will not eat into the aluminum foil duct tape let it dry and then apply another coat you can use a wood jigsaw blade to cut through the hardboard it's called standard hardboard This is the template that I cut out of standard hardboard using a jigsaw blade. It's just done with a sharpie. You sort of estimate it and then you, by trial and error, you sort of take a little bit off. And then once you have this template, then you just lay it on top of the rigid insulation and that gives you an approximate shape. And then you can use the um, cutting techniques to shape it perfectly to fit your car trunk. This is how the item looks. See, it's like this, it's thin. That's what the other side looks like. It's made of rigid insulation and it has these indentations for the headrest cut out of it. And then the edge here has been contoured to the shape of the car so that it fits into the trunk space. It's very light and it's spray painted with black spray paint and there's aluminum foil duct tape over the rigid insulation to strengthen it and to stop it from wearing at the edges. This is what the board looks like. These are the indentations for the headrest. They're, they're cut, they've been cut out. This is aluminum foil duct tape which has been spray painted and then you can see it wears off a little bit but it makes it a lot tougher so that the rigid insulation does not wear. The edges are contoured to the shape of the car and then that's the aluminum foil tape and then there's spray paint over top. The item is as thin as a piece of rigid insulation. It's very light. So this is how the board fits into the car. See, it covers the trunk space. And it just sits on top of here, and down here is the trunk. It also has these little aluminum things that I trimmed. You can fold them out, and then that connects to the back of the trunk so no one can see in. They're sort of shaped, sort of like the trunk. Now the seats get folded up. You have to make sure it locks into place. The seats fold into place and this is on top of the seats here now the headrest is inserted and it fits right into these little notches here now the headrest fits right into the little gaps that I carved. 
The headrests fit right into the little gaps that I carved. Now I close the trunk. And people can't see in, inside the trunk. And now people can't see inside the trunk or what's in the trunk because of the cloth covering. This is what it looks like with the cloth covering on top. So I just put the cover over top of the board.